Welcome to the FRPP training video. In today's video, I will go over how to access the FRPP homepage as well as how to access the different kinds of reports and how to access the online training material. So in order to access the FRPP homepage, you first have to log into Salesforce. In order to log into Salesforce, you must have a Salesforce account. If you do not have a Salesforce account, please contact your Office of Government-Wide Policy, or better known as OGP Liaison, to obtain a user ID. The URL to access the FRPP via Salesforce uh, website is the realpropertyprofile.gov page. So I'm going to copy that into my browser. This is the Federal Real Property Profile Management System um, homepage, or better known as FRPP uh, Management System. For this training video, I will be using um, test accounts in order to show you the functionality and features of the FRPP webpage. Now, there are essentially two kinds of users. One is a consumer user and a collaborator user. And I'll go into a little bit more detail in the training video uh, presentation later on to explain the differences between the two uh, user uh, account uh, user types and what each user can do. Um, so for now, I'm just going to log in as a consumer user, and here's my test account. So I'll enter my username and password, and click on login. Now because because the Salesforce uses a two-part authentication, you will get a um, login code via the email address that you have on file with your Salesforce account. Again, contact your OGP liaison to get further details as far as what email address you use to set up your um, Salesforce account. Okay. Once I enter the verification code, I click on Next, and that should take me to the FRPP MS Portal page. Um, here, in order to access the FRPP uh, uh, page, you would first have to click on DTD Reports, and then click on to the Data to Decision logo. And if you look at the training uh, presentation, the, um, which is also available on the FRPP site, and I'll show you that where it's available. Um, this walks you through step by step um, how to log into the uh, FRPP uh, homepage, how to access it via the FRPP uh, MS portal page. So, as, as I said, um, what you would do is you would click on the Data to Decision logo, and you'll notice at the bottom. Um, it'll, it asks me, do I want to disable pop-up uh, for this uh, website? So if your browser has pop-ups, then you need to disable those pop-ups in order to be able to access the FRPP um, uh, homepage. Um, and my suggestion is if you do have the option of disabling, you know, uh, allowing it once or always allowing, I would suggest you disable for the entire realpropertyprofile.gov um, site. So once I disable the pop-up browser, this is basically the Federal Real Property Profile, or better known as FRPP, homepage. And as you can see, here you can access the various different reports, annual reports, summer reports, ad hoc reports, and then training material. Um, let me uh, go into the training material first so that you know where um, you can access the training uh, video that's being recorded, this video, as well as the training video presentation, which essentially is what I showed you here. Um, so if you go to the training materials from here, training materials, um, you'll see two links. Um, the FRPP training video, if you click on that, that essentially brings you to the YouTube page of where this training video 
will be accessible. And then if you click on the FRP training presentation, this is where a PDF version of the training PowerPoint slide presentation available. And I highly recommend um, you go through this or you have this open when you're um, navigating through the FRPP uh, homepage and the various reports because there's a lot of detail in here and it walks you step by step. It actually has locations of where you need to save things. Um, it has um, you know some ch little details, or tricks, um, you know, sort of pointers, um, so to speak. So I'm going to leave this open because I'll reference it throughout the uh, this video presentation. But just want to let you know. So I'm going to close this, and the first tab what we see is annual reports. So let's click on annual reports. And here, the first thing you'll be asked is to select the reporting year. Now, if I click on here, I'll basically be able to select which reporting year annual reports are available. So we go all the way back to 2012. So for now, I'm just going to click on 2016, and I'll click on OK. And here's a list of all the annual reports that are available for fiscal year 2016. For annual reports, um, they haven't changed. They're the uh, same list of reports. We've got 23 reports here um, as they are for 2000, all the way going on back to 2012. So yeah, as you see, 23 reports. So I'll go back to 2016. And some of these reports, as you can see, has a asterisk, which is basically a disclaimer at the bottom. It tells you what that asterisk means. Essentially, it's saying to refer to the data dictionary at gsa.gov uh, forward slash data dictionary dot com. Um, so let me run uh, run uh, an, a couple of annual reports so that you get an idea of what they look like. So as you see, this please wait window, um, if you go back to the training uh, slide presentation, you'll see I have a slide on here that explains that, you know, basically some reports have a large amount of data, data and depending on your user profile, you may have access to more than one agency, so hence it may take a while for those reports to generate. So you'll see this please wait uh, window open up. Um, Please be patient and let this window finish um, toward to disappear before you actually go in and access the reports. Do not press cancel because then the report won't load um, all the data and won't load correctly. And so essentially this is what a report looks like. Um, here's the general standard navigation pane um, for all of the FRPP uh, the, webs uh, pages um, on the on the, on the FRPP page um, I had highly advise not to use this back button um, and to use your navigation back and forward buttons when navigating to the FRPP site um, you if you, you if you use this back button you'll end up places that um, you don't want to um, and that we don't recommend for example just to, for this video presentation if I click on the back button you end up in this repository section um, which which you really don't want to end up at this point. Um, so my suggestion is not to use it. Um, I'm going to use the navigation back button. It should take me back to the report because um, it's in the history. So there you go, the report. And again, also, the, you have a Save As button. I highly recommend not using that because essentially what you're doing is saving this report in the FRPP uh, repository. And the system won't allow you to save it, but I would highly recommend not to even risk it. Um, you don't want to mess up the, the system by saving this report somewhere in a location, uh, which may cause problems for other uh, other users or actually for the system itself. Um, if you want to export this report out, I highly recommend you use this export to feature. Now you can export it as a PDF, Excel, CSV, and a bunch of other um, formats. If you want to export this to sort of as a uh, as a presentation or to show the report as is, then by all means use the export to PDF. It'll just basically export a PDF version of what you see on screen. If you want to export this out so that you can do computation on it or if you want to 
you know, sort of uh, use this reward as an input into another application or do, uh, you know, edit these fields, then highly recommend you use export at CSV. Um, I'll explain later on um, how the differences between Excel and CSV, what they look like. Um, but for now, um, I would just say that if you do export it, export it out as CSV. Um, and then also you can zoom out, zoom in. Um, you can search on this report. All of this report is straight, straightforward. It's only on one page, so there's really not much to search on. But if you have a long report and you want to look for specific data, you can search the report. Um, and as well, if the report has more than one page, then you can navigate to the next page um, or to a specific page. It'll have that option. But in for this de uh, d uh, video presentation, um, basically, I'm logged in as a consumer user. I only have access to the commerce agency, so um, the report is pretty straightforward. It's only on one page. So I would say, you know, if, you, if you're if you done with the report, you close this tab. What you'll find is that because FRPP uh, uses, opens up reports and windows and new tabs or pop-ups, as they're called, you'll find that you'll start having a lot of tabs if you open up a lot of windows or a lot of reports that just be, you know, uh, mindful that, you know, you may have to close up tabs to get to, um, you know, the, uh, the original page um, back here. The other thing I want to show you, as I mentioned earlier, um, if you click on this, this is called an input window. If you click on that, then obviously you can change certain things. In this case, you just change the reporting year for uh, which uh, annual reports you want to run to. So I'll, rep I'll run through another report for annual reports just to give you an idea. Well, let's run to the last report, which is utilization report. And as you see, it says, please waiting. So these reports sometimes are based on the data. It can take a while, so just be patient. Um, this report had an asterisk, which was a disclaimer, and it shows at the top, basically essentially use the uh, data dictionary or refer to the data dictionary uh, for details of the fields. Um, because I'm running this report for their fiscal year 2016, it shows up on the screen. So essentially, this is what the report looks like. And you'll see page 101, because um, this is only one page now. One thing to note is that if you have a report that has multiple pages, you should see the um, page numbers at the top and at the bottom. If the report takes a while to load, it'll say, please waiting, and you'll see that the numbers here start increasing. Um, so you want to make sure that you let the report load up completely uh, so that the numbers here at the bottom page one of whatever syncs up with the top. Um, so that's just a pointer. So be patient, let the report run completely. So that's annual reports. I'm going to close these tabs. And now we'll go into summary reports. So essentially the same thing. you got to pick the reporting year. So in this case, I'll click on uh, fiscal year uh, 2016 and here are the list of reports and you'll see some of these have asterisks and some of these have these um, crosshatch signs and at the bottom you'll see what they mean uh, the, the basically this uh, cross uh, hash symbol uh, basically means uh, to the, for the, from the CFO agency is required to submit the data for FRPP the star is obviously referring to the dictionary at gsa.gov um, now, before I run into the summary reports, I uh, run through them. Um, one thing I do want to mention about summary reports, and again, I'm referring back to the uh, to, to the uh, PDF version of the uh, uh, training present uh, training uh, PowerPoint slide. And there's basically three kinds of summary reports. There's um, summary reports which are comparison tables, which are basically comparing from agency wide and government wide. There are summary reports which don't have comparison, and there's summary reports which actually have drill down capabilities where you can actually click on a field and you'll see drill down details of that field. So just keep that in mind when I do run the reports. I'll show you what I mean by that. So um, the other thing to keep in mind is that right now for 2000, fiscal year 2016, we have 21 reports. We are um, in the process of loading two additional reports, getting the data set and creating those two reports. And those reports, if I go to 2015, um, you'll see that those, those reports are the um, OA cost uh, uh, SF report and the PMA benchmark freeze report. They will be available for 2016. We just are waiting on a data set and then we'll create the report. So it should be available shortly. For 
2014, we did not have data set for those rep for those three reports. Um, so as you can see, I only have 20 reports there. So um, I'll click on here. Uh, let's see. Let's go through one of these reports. Um, let's pick uh, this one. And so the report has loaded. As you can see, this is a comparison report. So it has agency-wide versus government-wide. And um, if you look at the bottom, it will actually has a chart, which basically has annual operating costs forward slash SF. It's owned and leased. And if I hover over, I'll see the actual numbers. This part is the agency-wide. And then this is the government-wide. Um, same navigation that we have before. Again, do not use the back button in the, naviga in, in the navigation window. To use the browser for and back buttons. Um, you can export this report, and I'll show you later the difference between an Excel and a CSV. This one has input controls, and basically the input controls allow you to change the type of uh, chart there is. Right now, it's annual cost forward slash SF. If I click on annual cost, it will change the annual cost. And this is where you can even select your agency. Um, because I'm logged in as a consumer user, I only have access to one agency, so I don't have, so I can only choose one. But if I had access to multiple agencies, for example, a collaborator user has access to multiple agencies, could have access to multiple agencies. OGP users definitely have access to multiple agencies. This is where I would choose which agency I want to see data for this report. So in this case, I'm just going to click on annual cost. And you'll see when I do that, now the graph has changed to annual operating cost. So I'm going to close this report. I'm going to run another report. Um, let's see which will be number five. Let's run that one. And you'll see this is a straightforward report. doesn't have any comparison between agency and government. Just a straightforward report. There is a graph here, a chart here, um, showing office square foot trend. And if I hover over, it'll actually give me the details of it. Um, as you see, there's no input control, so there's nothing really you can change on this report. Just a straightforward report. Uh, one thing that I do want to uh, mention, which um, I will show um, right now when I run this report. Okay. And so this is a comparison report, agency wide versus government, but then all government wide. But then also, this is a drill down has drill down details. So, what essentially happens is when you mouse over here, you see my mouse pointer changes from a arrow to now a uh, sort of a hand with a finger. That means basically that I can click on these uh, values and I'll be brought to the detailed drill downs, the drill down details for this value. So, for example, if I click on elevated, not historic. It essentially will bring me to, again, the historical status, elevated, not historic. It will give me the drill down details for the elevated historic for this agency. As you can see, this is what it looks like. Um, I can actually export the drill down details as well um, to CSV and Excel. Um, and I'll show you uh, when I go to the uh, summary report, the the, the summary report for this, um, I'll export it to show you. Now, this is where your navigation uh, uh, back and forward button comes in handy. So if you want to go back to the actual summary report, not the drill down, this is drill down details, but if you want to actually the actual report, I would highly recommend you use the back um, button of your browser, not the back button of your navigation pane. Uh, of, of the navigation pane for FRPP. So here I'm, back, uh, I'm brought back to the uh, to the, uh, to the actual summary report. And at the bottom, there's a chart here. Um, if I hover over it, I can see the values. I can even click on it, sort of separate it, click on it back again. So let me show you the differences between, if I, PDF I'm not going to show you because it'll just be a PDF version of what's on the screen. Um, but if I export to Excel, this is what the Excel version looks like. And as you see, it's trying to preserve the formatting on the screen, but obviously Excel is not the best uh, medium to do that. The, ch the, uh, the, the chart is there too, but as you can see, 
there's a lot of spacing here. Um, I would not use the Excel format um, because if you're gonna, if you want to preserve the formatting um, for, let's say, to present the report to somebody, then you're better off doing an export to PDF um, as opposed to using export to Excel. However, if I export to CSV, now CSV basically removes all the formatting. The chart isn't on here, but the actual values are on here, and they're in a neat, you know, row by row, um, column by column. Not, you know, the formatting is not uh, preserved, so there's no formatting issues to worry about. So this would be the best medium. Uh, to use if you want to do computation, let's say you want to use this, um, if you've got another program that you want to use this data for or another application, this would be the best medium to, uh, to use when you export. So I'm going to close this. So essentially that's some reports. I will um, run one more report show you. This is the all FRPPOA report um, that we have. And as you can see, now this one only has one page. I wanted to show you a report that has more than one page. Um, maybe I'll be able to show you that uh, when I use my uh, other uh, agency, uh, the collaborator user. Um, so essentially, that's what. Uh, All right, so now I'm going to show you what ad hoc reports. And at the beginning of this presentation, I mentioned that there's two kinds of users, a collaborator user and a consumer user. So right now, I'm logged in as a consumer user. And so essentially, a consumer user is a user that can pretty much go and navigate to the FRPP site in a read-only fashion. So basically, they're just executing uh, reports and running reports. They don't have the ability to create ad hoc reports, which is what a collaborator user has the ability. So as a consumer user, if I click on ad hoc reports, it will take me to this repository page where on the left hand side I see folders and if I want to see the remaining of what this folder name is, I will just expand out. So essentially, what these folders are is that basically you have public folders and your private folders. Consumer users only have access to public folders. So if, let's say, for example, a collaborator user was creating an, an ad hoc report and they wanted to save it so that everybody could view it, they would save in the public folder. And this is where you would see all the reports that are saved in the public folder. Um, there are views as well. You'd be able to see what people, um, what are available in the public folder. As you can see, there are some views here that people have created and have made available to the public. There is a basic search. Every every fiscal year has a basic search example. Um, essentially, it's it's the uh, the data set for that fiscal year with the basic um, fields um, that you can use. Um, as a starting point if you're a collaborator user. And I'll show you that when I log in as a collaborator user. So essentially, that's all that an ad hoc report, uh, ad hoc, a consumer user can do when they click on ad hoc reports. So um, for example, I don't, I'm not going to run through these reports because someone may have created them. Um, but essentially, for the view, if I click on the basic uh, view, it brings me into this I like to call the ad hoc uh, editor. Um, but essentially, it brings the entire data set in here and has a couple of fields. Um, you can add columns, you know, you can sh manipulate things. But as a consumer user, um, you you won't be able to save this report. You can export it out. Um, you know, you won't be because you, you only have read. you uh, you only have read access, so you won't be able to save it. Even though there's an option here, I believe that when you actually try to save it, it'll give you an error. I'm not going to, but that's essentially what it is. So. I'm now going to log in as a collaborator user and show you what that collaborator user looks like uh, when they um, navigate, uh, when they when they run ad hoc reports. Before I do that, I need to go back and uh, sort of get the URL for real property. And now I will actually select the uh, the collaborator user. Uh, 
and again two-part authentication so I'll check my email um, and I should have that code um, yes I do nine six two two four all right now again brings me to FRPPMS uh, portal homepage um, click on D2D reports and as you notice on this is a, a different browser and you see it says pop-up block pop-up block so what I'm gonna do is uh, as I recommend um, all uh, do always allow pop-up from the uh, real property profile gov page um, and I'll click on it again and essentially that takes me back to the uh, FRP. so if I click on here on ad hoc and I'm a collaborative user you'll notice that it takes me to this page which is essentially the ad hoc uh, landing page and I can do a f quite a few things here but the key things to focus on is essentially reports ad hoc views and dashboards um, so if I want to go to reports and view a list of existing reports that are available um, and essentially it's the ones that are available either to me um, that I've created um, and, or ones that are available in uh, in the public folders and you'll see type report and these are all the reports that are available to me um, essentially it's all the reports available in the entire system including the annual reports summer reports so this can get a little bit daunting sort of uh, you know to go through this entire list of final reports what I suggest you do is if you click on any time sorry let me go back to ad hoc reports if you click on view list here or if you go view list here essentially this basically takes me and shows me all the views ad hoc views um, here my suggestion is if you go and do view repository and then you navigate from OGP organizations FRPP ad hoc components expand this out and go here then this is a little bit easier to navigate because now you you sort of filtered out your entire list into the folders that they belong to so reports these are the public reports if you had a report as a collaborator user and you saved it and you saved it in the private folder for you to view only then you would see it in here um, same thing for reviews if you saved it in a private in the private folder um, you would see them here obviously there are some uh, reports that are saved as private um, and I can see those reports here um, as a consumer user I I wouldn't be able to see those because I wouldn't have access to the private folder just the public folders so my suggestion is you navigate to this um, if you're ever anytime you click on the uh, the view list now if you're wondering how do I navigate to this is you know if you want to have to remember this then if you go back to the um, training material slide present uh, training PowerPoint PDF uh, presentation then in here if you go all the way down to the ad hoc report section I have um, it's basically tells you um, to save where to save or to view view existing ad hoc reports collaborator users um, essentially has a uh, screenshot of where to navigate and then also it will tell you um, when you go to save the report it'll actually tell you here organizations organization FRPP ad hoc components ad hoc view uh, private or public ad hoc reports private or public so as I said the presentation uh, training presentation is a good reference guide um, to, to, to refer to when navigating through the FRPP site so I'll go back here um, I'll close this and I'll create essentially if I go create report what's it's going to ask me to do is first I need to select a view because a report is based on a view and it's going to ask me to select an existing view so if you don't have an existing view that you want to create a report off of my suggestion is you do the ad hoc view first so essentially create the view first then create a report you can do it at the same time um, if you do um, ad hoc uh, view so essentially I will click on create 
And the first thing I have to do is select the FRPP data set. So here I click on FRPP ad hoc and choose data. Now for some reason, for whatever reason, if it doesn't, when you click on create and it doesn't come to this view and you don't see FRPP ad hoc, and for some reason you're in this, um, you know, uh, tab, which is view as a tree, I highly recommend you then click on this. The reason why is, yes, you can navigate through the FRPP ad hoc data set, but you have to go all the way down and go into domains and then click it here. Um, it's just easier to do this, select it, and then choose data. So when you do that, what happens is you'll now see all of the data sets available in the FRPP database. Um, you can do view all data, which essentially is the data set of all of the fiscal years. Um, my suggestion is if you're doing ad hoc view, it's most likely going to be for a fiscal year. Just select that uh, data set for that fiscal year. Now, one of the things is I'll double click on here. Um, and then basically my suggestion is um, you double click on the data set and use the entire data set for your when creating the ad hoc view. The reason I say that is I could essentially click once and it has all the field values in that entire data set and I could choose which ones I want to create a view on but then what happens is if I were to select this if I select this and then click on OK, now I can only create the view based on these two elements. And then what if when I'm creating the view, I realized I wanted another data element and I forgot it and I didn't add it at this point, it's hard to add it afterwards. So my suggestion is you essentially just click the entire data set um, here. Um, yeah, so I essentially have created the entire data set and click on OK. Now here's where you have the entire data set. You can go ahead and pick fields that you want to add. Uh, what I suggest before you do that, um, here's a tip. Go to the actual, this is basically telling you the different kinds of uh, types of views you can create. You can do a table view, a cross tab view, a chart. I highly recommend you click on table first um, and then start creating your view because what will happen is if you create the cross tab, then essentially a cross tab is a grouping by and when you start adding uh, fields, it then adds them as a, um, as a row instead of a column and then when you go to tables um, it it doesn't copy over the rows to the column and let me show you what I mean by that so let's say for example if it was a cross tab and I clicked on let's say city name um, you know if I clicked on the now these two are rows if I do uh, if I change it to a table I essentially want these to be moved to the column um, because I want them to be columns, but they're not. They're now gr in the group by section. Now, if I were to take that out and leave it in table, if I originally started out as in table and I added, let's say, for example, city name, um, reporting, and if I can't see, I can always expand this out uh, the, to see the full name, reporting agency name, reporting bureau name, let's say, um, Disposition method, disposition code, um, state. Let's add that in there. If I were to now change it to a cross tab, what will happen is these columns will now become rows, right? Which is essentially what happens when you add it in as a cross tab. But if I go back to table, then they do change back to columns. They don't stay in the group. Um, so that's why I would say when you start off, just make sure it's, it's as a table instead. Now, if I wanted to add, let's say, for example, annual operating costs. Well, I don't see annual operating costs in here. Um, the, so I have to go here at the bottom, which is called a measure, because an annual operating cost is an actual uh, numerical uh, value. And so it would be here. Now, yes, there is a zip code in here, but the system actually, even though zip code contains numbers, it's actually stored as an alphanumeric character um, because there are uh, countries outside of the United States that have 
letters in their zip code. So essentially, it's a actual alphanumeric field. But all the numeric fields are here. Um, so if that, that, so if you if you want to look for a numeric field, then look for the, look at it in the, in the measures tab. So I'll put an annual operating cost, acres, annual rent. And essentially, that's uh, I don't have anything on on that. Um, so now, what this is basically showing you is the sample data. So it's just showing you the first um, I don't know about ten rows. Um, I would say now you can do no data, and it won't show you any of the data. It'll just show you the um, no data at all, or you can do full data now. I'm going to warn you about full data because now it's trying to load the entire data set. And what happens is when I go down, it'll start loading more data. And if I do that, now it's going to start loading more and more data. So this can get slow um, to navigate um, if you use full data. Um, my suggestion is to use sample data. Now, if I do sample data, um, see, these, I can change this to detailed data, the totals, which essentially give them the totals there, and I can change this to details and totals, which essentially gives me, um, at the bottom, has the totals. And again, this is sample data, so it's just doing the totals for, I guess, the, the first um, 15 rows or so. The other thing you can do is you can filter. So if I were to take a field and I would say um, create, right click on it and say create filter. So now I can create a filter. I can select on this and let's say I click on Alaska and do apply. Now it's only going to show me the data for the state of Alaska. I can then remove the, the field, remove filter. Um, and notice it still hasn't reflected in the actual data set, in the actual view, I should say. You actually have to click on Apply, and now it's, uh, it'll show me all of the uh, states. So the other thing I can do is I can do a uh, group by state, for example. And one thing I, I want to show you is if you notice there is right here a, a row which doesn't have a state name. It has values, but it doesn't have a state name. So what will happen is if I change this to state name, it will now show me city name, but it won't show me the state. That's because I'm looking at sample data. If I were to call full data and essentially keep going down, eventually I'll get to that first state. Um, I can show you this better if I do the sort order here. You can sort it um, in uh, ascending order or descending order. I'm going to sort this out. Um, actually, it'll ask me which fields that I want to sort out. So you can pick the fields that you want to sort out. But what I would like to show you is if I can go back and change this. And let's say put city name. City name, there is a city name. So as you can see, um, this now shows you the city, um, Aberdeen, Abiquiqui, um, Ada, Ada Station. So it shows you essentially what I was trying to show you is a group by the city name. So I'll change this out. The other thing that you can do here is you can click on this, and this toggles between the editor and the actual view itself. Um, this is what the view would look like if a user were to, you know, if you saved your view and a user clicked on your view, this is what it look, would look like. And obviously the data in here would pertain to that user. Um, it would only show the data that the user has access to. Um, so because I'm a collaborative user, it's only showing me data that I have access to. So if you create a report or a view, uh, don't be worried that, you know, whoever runs that report is not going to see your data unless they have access to your data. So I'm going to go back to the designer view, uh, which is what they call it, which is basically the editor view. And the other thing that I want to show you is um, I can actually create a calculated field. I can name the calculated field test sum. 
and then basically have a function here. Essentially, this, this is a uh, SQL query window, so you can actually type in SQ, uh, SQL commands uh, or SQL expression, um, and that can be uh, that custom field. So I'm just going to go click on here and do a sum, double click on it. And one thing to know is that what you have to do is select this, the number field name, and then select, let's say, what you want. So basically, acre. So see, it replaced it. But if you were to not do that, and let's say do annual, see, it shows up at the end. It won't actually show in the field. So you do have to actually select the field and then highlight the field and then select the field and it will replace it. Now, one thing I suggest you do is if I do a create measure, it'll actually create this, this custom field. Um, but I do not know whether this formula will actually work or not. And the, the way to find that out is if you click on the validate button and you'll see that it's saying that this formula is not valid. It doesn't work. Highly recommend you use the validate button before you save your, your formula. So in this case, um, I'm going to do this. Um, so hopefully it will validate. And yes, it does. Validation is successful. So I'll click on the create. And it's actually, as you can see, it's a test sum. It's actually created here. I can now add it. Um, it's added. And uh, let me see at the bottom. Um, because acres has nothing in there. This obviously doesn't have anything in there. Um, I can actually let me go ahead and edit it and, and change it to annual operating cost. So I can edit it. Click on this and do annual operating cost, validate it, and save. And now it changes it, and you'll see this is the annual operating cost. It's the same thing as this um, field. Now I'm just showing you the functionality. Obviously, this probably doesn't make any sense, but this is just to show you. Now, if I wanted to remove this field, if you notice, if I right-click, and a lot of these things to do the the properties or to do something on a field you right click I can only add a column or edit it when I'm gonna what I in order to delete it I actually literally have to remove that field from the view um, and then go ahead and delete it and it'll ask me to delete it so I've deleted it um, you can this is basically toggling the title bar um, basically if I do that then essentially it removes the title um, and then I'll go back and actually add the title in. So the other thing to let me show you is you can do a chart um, and then basically it gives you a chart. You can change the chart type, um, make it into a line if you want. And you can do change the format. And you know, you can change the layout, the access, the appearance, etc. I'm going to go back to table and you can export your view if you want um, again recommended is uh, export to CSV now if you want to save your view here's what you would do I would say that you do do not do save as ad hoc view um, you can do save ad hoc view as and essentially you're saving the view and essentially you have to uh, name your view. Don't use the default. Um, you want to write overwrite uh, someone else's view. Uh, the system won't allow you to, but why take that chance? And then obviously here you have to sort of navigate to where um, the view should be saved, and it should be saved in the uh, views either public or private. And the location of this going back to the training presentation. I'll go, I'll go back here. It tells you exactly where the location of how to save it, and it gives you the window, um, uh, a screenshot of. But what I would do is I wouldn't do this. I would say cancel. And what I would suggest you do is do save out on view and create report. So essentially, why would you do a view? You do a view so that you can actually create a report so that you can um, you know, give that report to someone else to run or execute. So here, the window is a little bit different because now you're on the left hand side is to save your view and the right hand side is save your report name your report and I'll say sample I would suggest you name uh, sorry name your your view and then I would suggest you name your report as well and essentially save 
the location, save your and notice I can't see uh, what this label is called so if I navigate down I can actually expand this window out and so that I can actually see and what I would say is if you want to create this enough so that people can see it um, you would do public uh, for reports you would organizations um, sorry ad hoc components and you would save it in the uh, public folder as well and then you would click on save and it would save it I'm not going to do that um, for this uh, video presentation but essentially that's what you would do and then if you were to go into the uh, repository the view list you would see it here um, the uh, if you're the essentially yeah you would see it here it would be stored in in, in the in the public folder if it's a private and you store it in a private then it would be in the private folder so that covers the ad hoc report so I'm going to exit out um, one thing that um, I want to show you um, in ad hoc reports is a, is the dashboard feature um, this is essentially a feature available to collaborative users where you can have multiple reports or views in one central location so essentially you run a dashboard and your all your reports are there um, but be care be be mindful that you get all of the reports all the annual reports all the summary reports all the views and they're not particularly labeled well um, these are actual what the actual names of the reports are in the database so they're not uh, user uh, uh, labeled friendly user friendly so you do have to be careful as to uh, what you're actually picking from and what you want to show up in your in your uh, dashboard one thing I'll, 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 I'll remind you is some of the summary reports have DD in front of them that's a drill down detail uh, report of that summary report remember I said that some reports some of them have drill down capabilities that's the drill down capabilities of a report um, because you'll see that sometimes the summary report has the same name here, cost SF, and then uh, if they have a drill down detail, then you'll see the drill down. So, for example, agency disposition, agency disposition here, the DD is the drill down details of the uh, of that report. So, if I want to add it to my dashboard, I can add that. Um, that'll give me the uh, and and if I wanted to add the drill down details, I could do that too. That's the drill down details of it. Um, and essentially what I could do is I can size up this, um, expand this out if I want to. I can right click on it, um, change the properties of the actual report on the dashboard itself. I can also go ahead and change the properties of the dashboard itself. And just as an ad hoc, uh, as an ad hoc views reports, I can toggle between the design view and display mode, essentially see what the dashboard will look like if I were to run it and then also save the dashboard and if I save it you label your dashboard uh, call it something and then obviously save it in the organization uh, in the in the organization's FRPP ad hoc components and save it in either a dashboard private or public folder section um, so that's essentially what dashboards are I'm not gonna save it um, uh, because there aren't any dashboards no one's created a dashboard there isn't a view list here it's just a create but if someone were to create a dashboard then it would show up as a view list and you'd be able to run that dashboard or create a new one the other thing that I wanted to show you quickly is a summary reports and because I'm logged in as a um, collaborator user I wanted to show you the all FRPP OA report yeah so if you're a consumer user, as I as, as I showed before, um, let me close this and show you what I mean by that. Is if I'm a if I'm a consumer user and I clicked on this report, and it's only for this report. If I click on the all FRPP OA report, it actually runs the report, and I can see the report. It'll take a while to run the report, but it'll actually execute the report. Um, so this is what the report looks like. 
if you're a consumer user, you can run the report. However, if you're a collaborative user, then what will happen is when I clicked on this, it actually take me to this. The reason for that is this is that all FRPPOA report is a huge report. If you have access to more than one agency, um, for some agencies, they have a lot amount of data. Um, and so that report is just too big for the system to handle. So what we've done in the system is as a collaborative user, we have actually stored that report into a set of folders. So if you are a, um, a, a collaborative user, in my case, I'm an interior user. So this report right here is saved here as a CSV file, the all FRPPOA report. So if you click on that, it'll actually just save it as a CSV file. Um, and that way you can actually open up the report in whatever program you, you use to open up CSV files, you can manipulate it, you can edit it, you can you can do whatever you need to, and it'll be saved there. Um, if I click on, you know, other, because I, I there's a test account, um, I'll be able to click on the other agencies and I'll be able to see that report, but in, in your user ID should only be able to see the report for your, uh, your, uh, your agency. So in this case, that's where the report is. So it's only for that one particular report, and it's only for some reports. It's all FRPPO reports. So if you're a collaborative user, then it'll actually um, take you to this folder structure, and you can run that report um, in that folder only uh, for your agency. So I'm going to close this up. And essentially, that sort of concludes this uh, training video uh, presentation. I've run through, uh, showed you the annual reports, the summary reports, the ad hoc reports, and showed you the difference between a consumer user and a collaborator user for ad hoc reports. I've showed you where the training material is. Um, I highly recommend that, um, especially if you don't use FRPP um, that often, then, you know, when you do um, access the FRPP page, then, my suggestion is open up the uh, training, FRPP training presentation, have it open in a window um, like I have it here. Um, if you want, you can, you know, even take it out and keep it with you, uh, visible, keep it visible with you while you navigate through the uh, website because it does have um, quite a lot of information in here. Um, you know, it tells you wh what locations where to save uh the, your ad hoc views in um you know it, it actually does go into you know uh dashboards what you can do with dashboards so it has a lot of information in here um that you know will be useful for uh, if you're will be useful to a user if you're uh, uh you know if you're while you're navigating through the frpp uh, uh frpp site so that concludes the training for this presentation. I hope you've enjoyed it. And if you have any questions, then you can contact uh, your the help desk or you can contact the OG, your OGP liaison. Um, if you don't have a Salesforce account, please contact your OGP liaison to get uh, a, a, a Salesforce account.